Hey guys, it's Tomatoda, and today I'm going to be doing a review for the Yakamo's hand drill for crafting. So I bought this over a Dremel because I originally did buy a Dremel, but then I had some minor drama with it, and I was just like, nah, I don't have the patience. I'm gonna find something on Amazon. And to be honest, um, the price of this was similar to that of the Dremel, but you know for a Dremel, you can actually do like other things with it besides just drilling. This, however, is solely a drilling tool and that's all I needed to do. So I first reviewed this drill back in August 20th of 2018. And by this time, I had already used it for a few weeks. And even now, it's going pretty strong. Like I haven't had any issues with it. It still works great and I still really, really like it. And I, I think for me, it was a good investment. Like I mentioned before, I first got it on Amazon and if you type in Yakamo's, you'll get a result for it. So there's a few different options and the one that I have is this one. And I know it's not exactly cheap cheap, but I think the drill has paid for itself. So as you can see, the specific one I have is a 0.03 by 4 millimeters and the battery or the AC adapter has this, um, this shit on it. Like mine didn't have this, it doesn't come with this, but I guess they upgraded. This one is uh, cheaper and it's a 0.7 by 1.2 millimeters. So I think just the range, the bit range is different. That's what I think. And also it's kind of smaller in design. But the reason why I chose this one over this one was because of the reviews saying that the drill bits didn't fit into it. And I'm not sure where I got this idea, but I was thinking they gave you like 0.3 millimeter drill bits, but the sizing only goes as low as 0.7 millimeters. And that's why it keeps falling out. That was my logic at that time. So that's what I thought, but I'm not too sure anymore. Um, it does have, 4.1 stars out of 1,283, so, you know. But I wanted to play it safe and I got this. But now that I think about it, I'm not sure if my thinking was correct. <laughs> Either way, what I got was still worth it for me. I think maybe in the future, I would like to try and get this and see how it is too. They also have a cordless one, which looks like it's the same one as almost the same one as this one, but just cordless because it's battery powered, but I don't fuck with no batteries because I'm not gonna wait hours to let this fucking charge, okay? Sorry, um, it's because we have chargeable batteries at home and I just hate having to wait for it to charge because thing is like, I don't charge them beforehand. I charge them when they, when it goes out. So then I'm using it and it dies on me. I'm like, oh man, I have to charge my batteries. So then I plug it in and then I have to wait for like a whole day for it to freaking recharge. Then I have to use it the next day. So it like delays my life. Even if the cord isn't the most comfortable to use, I need to use it now. So I keep the drill bits in this little bag. And yes, these are actually the same drill bits I use for my clay canes. So, you know, they came in really handy. I feel like I either lost some drill bits or I've added some drill bits that weren't originally here. I actually don't even remember because I have this hand drill and it came with like two or three other sizes and I just kind of like, pfft there. But this one is the smallest drill bit size and I believe that this one is the largest one. So these drill bits are very sturdy and whatever projects I've used them for have actually, you know, kept them in shape except for this one. I don't know if you can tell but it's slightly curved and it's not from a project. It's because I I had it in here and then I dropped it and I guess maybe it landed like this or something. I'm not sure, but it bent when I dropped it. So that is kind of my fault. But even the smallest um, sizes, they've all kept their straight shape. It doesn't mean that it's completely unusable, which I will demonstrate in a bit, in a drill bit. I'm gonna plug it in to this um, adapter that it came with. My adapter looks like this, not like the Amazon listing. 
When I want to switch drill bits, I use this tool that it came with. And you see how there are several holes? You're gonna just stick it in one and then see how the gears turn. And depending on which way you turn it, you either tighten the hole or you open up the hole. So let me show you what it looks like with a straight drill bit. So this is the tiniest one. And if the opening is too large, it'll just like wishy-washy everywhere. So I'm gonna close it just a little bit. Oops, that's the wrong way. Try it again, just making sure it doesn't move around because I don't want it to be here and then close it and use it. And so I'm gonna put it in, it fits and it doesn't wishy-washy around. So then I'm gonna tighten it more until it's very, very tight. Oh shit, sorry. Also, another thing that I like about this is that you can adjust the height of the needles. So if I want it to be long, just tighten like this. But if I want it to be short, and I don't know if you can tell, but the sound is pretty quiet. Now I'm gonna use the um, crooked one, the bent one. This one is in all the way. It doesn't affect the hole very much because you can still see that it spins in a linear direction. But when I elongate it, boner. <laughs> That's so funny on camera. But yes, this is what happens. And that means, you know, when I make a hole, it's not going to be in one direction. It's going to just... Let me show you. Uh, the bigger drill bit. Oh, that's actually really huge. And considering how wide it opens, you could probably fit larger drill bits if you have some. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you totally can, because I don't know if like the makers are like, oh, if you put in a large drill bit, it's gonna break the drill. I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying that it's a possibility. The deepest this one goes is that much though. As you can see, there is a on and off switch button next to where the cord goes in. This is on and this is off. So if you leave it on and you plug it in, it's gonna just start. So you should be careful. Look how straight this is. I've always found that the thicker rods are easier to put in straight, but sometimes when I work with the smaller ones, I do have to be careful because there is a possibility that you might stick it like this if like, you know, there is a huge gap. Like I said before, and then, oh no. So just keep that in mind. So I am going to demonstrate for you guys on some craft pieces. I do recommend you wear a mask and glasses because it's always better to be safe than sorry. But for demonstration purposes, because I, I want to talk about it, I'm not going to be wearing anything. Please forgive me. So first I'm going to drill through resin pieces and let's see if it'll even the height doesn't even reach that, so... I always like to look at it... Oh shit! <laughs> look at it in different angles just to make sure that it is going straight. Especially if the piece is clear. You can see its movements. Which, you know, is also not good because- Whoa! So as you can see, on clear pieces, you can see the tracks. Now I'm going to test it on a thin piece of resin with the smaller drill bit size. Now I always test to see if it's straight first. That looks good. Now for pieces like these, you can't really see through it. So you're just gonna have to try your best. But what I like to do is just align the drill with the straightness of the actual piece. Make sure it's aligned. And once you're sure, you can kind of push it through gently. There we go. So here's the initial hole. There's the exit hole. It will take a bit of practice to get it like this, I guess, because when I first started using this drill, it was not always so straight. And then put your bead thingy in. 
and then see charm next i'm going to demonstrate on clay so the thing with clay it depends on your project but this one is like one solid chunk mass so i can just kind of drill it through but if you have little sculptures that are more delicate i do suggest you put tape in the entrance hole or tape kind of like around it to secure it because in past projects when i've used the drill the entrance did have cracks and sometimes the whole piece will just break apart i think because this might be a little bit too strong especially if your thing is bent you have to be more careful because you know it goes like this also when you first begin you might want to use a hand drill to make some initial dents because when you use the electric drill it'll like go move around but if you make this initial dent it's stuck in here oh i don't think that's where the hole should have been This is not the ideal line. Yes. And with clay, I think it depends what kind of clay, but with Fimo, I get this strand. And I think it's because it, it melts. I mean, the piece is pretty hot and I think it just like melts the clay or something that it creates this string. Also, this is how I typically hold and do my drilling. I'm going to use a bigger drill just for funsies. Yeah, be careful. It's not like sharp enough to actually cut my finger, but you should still be careful. Nice hole. Now I'm gonna demonstrate on wood. I don't have a lot of type of woods. I have sticks and this, I think this is balsa wood. I'm not sure. And in the past, I've actually used it to drill holes in middle bottle caps. <sighs> Oof, that was scary, but there's a hole. There you have it, an anniversary gift for your loved ones. Out of everything that I've crafted with, the only thing I would advise against is shrink plastic because when you drill the shrink plastic, it like melts around the blade or around the drill and it kind of gets stuck and then you have to like remove it, but it's not very easy to remove. So I would not recommend shrink plastic. So I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of this drill. My initial thoughts about the drill was pro. It's pretty quiet. I mean, I think it's pretty quiet, especially compared to all the other machines and devices I use for crafting. It doesn't get very hot. It has a lot of different drill bit sizes and it's perfect for hobbies. These pros are still the same to me. And now that I've used it for like, what, three years, I want to add that it's sturdy. My initial cons were that it was bulky and I was a little bit worried I might not be able to handle it well because it's so bulky but after using it for a long time it's very like natural to me now to turn it on, to turn it off, to like move it here and there. My other con is that it had no instructions. However, you can tell that it's kind of easy to figure it out and also now that I have this video, you've got instructions. My third initial con was that I didn't like the on off button. It seemed kind of far and I wanted it on the side just so I can like press it, go, stop, go, stop really easily. 
but I've adjusted to that. So the bulkiness and the on off button is no longer a con for me. But right now, when I think about it, I think the two cons are probably the price. Like I said, it is worth it. It's just, I wish it was cheaper. And then the other con is that when you first get it, or when I first got mine, it had a lot of grease on it. Like it was like oily grease and I think it's just to make it run better. But when I used it for the first several times, the grease or the oil splattered around. So, you know, whatever paper, clothes or stuff I had, had little tiny like specks of oil. Like it's not a whole lot, but it was enough for me to be like, ew, what is that? So I'm not sure if you're supposed to wipe that off, but yeah, that is still a con in my mind. Anyways, that is it for this drill review. I hope you guys found it to be helpful. And thank you guys for watching. See you next week. Bye-bye.